So, Sir Keir Starmer has just held a meeting with all 12 Metro mayors in Downing Street. Now, this comes as the House of Commons is set to return this afternoon. GB News' correspondent Olivia Utley joins us now. Olivia. There's been a meeting of the Metro mayors in Downing Street this morning. Because the Labour Party did so well, not only at the general election, but the local elections as well, almost all of the Metro mayors, with the exception of Ben Houchen, the Conservative for Tees Valley, are now Labour. That means that Keir Starmer can have a very sort of open and easy dialogue with them in the way that uh, Rishi Sunak couldn't really. He's beginning with this council of Metro mayors. They're going to uh, discuss what ideas they have for helping grow the economy, both in their own regions and around the UK in general. It doesn't sound as though Keir Starmer has actually uh, put money where his mouth is. It doesn't sound as though they've actually been given any more cash. But speaking to a couple of them just here this morning, I'm hoping we might get Ben Houchin um, over here in a moment and he should be coming to us next. Um, but they are all sounding pretty chipper about the new Prime Minister and excited about this new partnership. Keir Starmer believes in the uh, sort of devolution project in a way I'm not quite sure that uh, the Conservative Prime Ministers before him did. So this should be a sort of very open dialogue. Whether that will actually help uh, those regions around the country without any extra cash is another question. Uh, we had Olivia Archley a little bit earlier on. She was um, joining us from Downing Street. Well, she had Ben Houchin with her, um, one of the mayors, in fact, the only Conservative Metro mayor to remain in post. And we can speak to him this morning. Uh, welcome to the programme. Good morning, Ben. Uh, you've been in and spoken to the Prime Minister this morning. Olivia's oh, talking. Olivia's going to talk to him. Great. Oh, oh. <laughs> hello. Yes, I'm going to talk to Ben Houch. You know, I've got here. You've been in number 10 this morning speaking to the Prime Minister. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what the meeting was like, what, what was said? Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, Keir Starmer was kind enough to give me some of his time before the meeting of mayors, having not met him before. And he was very keen to reiterate that he was wanting to work with me. You know, the messages we heard during the campaign, right? He wants to put the country first, party politics second. And to be fair, I reiterated the same thing. If he wants to work with me to be able to get things done for our area, to deliver those growth plans that he sorely needs, uh, if he wants to deliver on his promises to the great British public, then he's going to need people like myself and the other mayors to make that happen. And I think he realised that. He wanted to talk a lot about planning reform, how mayors could be able to help with that, have a growth plan to understand how we could unlock growth to be able to deliver on his plans. He recognises that that can't necessarily all be done from the centre and that we're going to be key to those plans. There's a lot of talk about sort of open dialogue with the Metro mayors, etc. Is Kisama actually going to put money where his mouth is? Was there a promise of more money for the Tees Valley this morning or for any of the other uh, Metro regions? Well, I think, not to get too technical and boring, but there were definitely signs that there were changes to devolution that he wanted to make to give us more autonomy, to be able to get on and deliver, not to go back to government every day asking for a handout. There was talk of multi-year financial settlements. You know, that has to be worked through in the run-up to what will, I assume, be a fiscal event in the autumn. Uh, but it was very positive, actually. I was really pleasantly surprised that he was really energetic, really keen, he wanted to work with us, and he was very open to the idea of much more devolution, which has changed with different Prime Ministers over the last 10 or 15 years, depending on which one it is. So ultimately, we're going to have to uh, keep him to his word. If he keeps his promises, then it looks very promising for further devolution, and ultimately, it looks very promising that we can get on and deliver for our regions. The Conservative Party has obviously just suffered this historic defeat, the fewest MPs ever in the party's history. What would you sort of like to see next for the party? Is it time to sort of sit and take stock, or should the, should the party elect a new leader quickly and get on with it? Well, I think there are two things there. I think the Conservative Party need to learn the right lessons from the election defeat last week. Firstly being, it's not about lurching further to the right or the left. I think the ideological argument misses the point altogether. What we found in the election last week is people didn't think that we were competent of governing anymore. They had lost faith in the fact that we could have a effective governance. Therefore, they lost trust in us and therefore they wanted to change. So that was about effective governance, no more infighting, no more U-turns. That's what we need to concentrate on uh, centrally if we want to be electable again. And that road to redemption can be as long or as short as we choose to make it. And I'm worried that if we're not careful, it could take a very, very long time. When it comes to the leadership contenders, though, I think it's pretty obvious to me who the obvious players are. I mean, it's not any great surprises. There's going to be five or six of them that everybody's going to expect. There may be some left field candidates that nobody expects, but the idea we should have a very long and drawn out leadership process for five or six people that we pretty much know what they're about and where they stand within the party would seem to be to be nonsensical. We need an effective opposition. We need to be able to rebuild the party. We need to start quite quickly. And I think navel gazing for too long will upset the public. They'll think that we're spiraling off into another internal, inward looking existential crisis. We need to be effective. We need to be ruthless. We need to get back to business. We, under we need to understand what it is to govern and what it is to get back to being able to govern this country again at some point in the future.
And I have to ask you, you are now the most powerful conservative in the country. Um, who would you like to see as the next leader out of those five or six? Well, I think that's debatable. I don't know, it depends who you're speaking to. Um, I mean, it's too early to tell, right? Let's see who declares. Like I said, we've got a rough idea of the obvious candidates. There may be a couple of left field candidates who come in. Let's see. We haven't had yet a readout, as, I, as far as I'm aware, from the National Convention of the Conservative Party that kind of set out some of the rules. The 1922 committee, which is uh, the, the group of MPs in Parliament who do set out the rules for the leadership contest. I think we're electing the chairman today. So let's see what the timeline is. Let's see what the process is. And then we can get into the detail of what the leadership would look like. So no one specifically you like the look of at this stage? At the moment, it's too early to be able to make those commitments. Thank you very much. Really good to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olivia, and thanks as well to Ben Houchen there. I love how he deflected that question when she said, you are now the most powerful Conservative in the party. Ooh, you know, people might disagree with that. I love it how they sort of panic at these sorts of titles. It's true, Ben. Take it. Own it.